you can head north down down to Ramsbottom at one of our regular services to Irwell Vale and Rottenstall. Or if you're more adventurous, you can follow the Irwell Valley Way, which heads here through Stubbins and its junction, and onward round the corner past the uh, mill cottages of Strongstreet and the newly built farm. Both routes will bring you to the interim newly built Irwell Vale station. So let's alight here and take a look at what Irwell Vale has to offer. Entering the village from the station, our first views are of the wonderful mill workers stone cottages. And the bridge crosses over the River Irwell where it has merged with the River Ogden from Haslington. Once a source of power for the mills, it's now more recreational in its uses. The fine examples of stone terraced mill cottages at Boca Street is a real oasis. And just around the corner you can see where the old Methodist church has been converted to houses. Irwell Vale once could boast at least three mills in this little village, but only one remains and that has been converted to soap manufacturing. Between the river and the back of the houses is the village green and at the end of the village green you will find a small church. It's here that there is a very pleasant coffee shop where you can buy pies and drinks. Up the road is the old engine house, very well worth a visit and obviously indicating an industrial past. Walking back along the Irwell Valley Way to Lumvale Mill, you'll get a very pleasant walk adjacent to the River Irwell. Follow the footpath back towards Ramsbottom, again adjacent to the river and here you'll be able to pick up some of the local wildlife. Just around the corner from here, pass underneath the railway line, and here we get to see some more of their wonderful artistry along the Irwell Valley Way. Remnant Kings, built in 1997. What a wonderful view, built from some of the mill wheels that there were around here. They seem to be breaking out of the earth, talking to one another, trying to rip out of the earth and head off into the distance. Very well worth a visit. The view from this point, especially in autumn, is breathtaking as the leaves change colour. From the small railway bridge, if you'd followed the main route up and onto the embankment, you'd come across the old viaduct which went to Haslingdon and Accrington. The route itself heads back to Ramsbottom and is part of the National Cycleway. Take the roads or the footpath and a kilometre and a half along it you'll find the best kept secret in Lancashire, the Helmshaw Textile Museum. Behind the more modern facade is the far more ancient mill and its primary building. There are many information boards to tell you the detailed history of the cotton mill here. The mill dam at the rear drives through the basement a large water wheel. These in turn operate the fulling stocks. With two mills and four floors to choose from, there's plenty to look at. The history of cotton is seen in its machinery and the various inventions which kept it going. And you are encouraged to have a go yourself at weaving. In the basement is a map of the mill complex and this gives you some idea of the history from when it was first built. There's also a chronology of owners and Mr Whittaker was one of the directors of the East Lancashire Railway whose face was seen on that bridge near Ramsbottom. On the top floor is a typical 1920s, 1930s mill and when these machines are rattling along you really can't hear anything. This is a splendid view of cotton at its best. And there are plenty of stewards and instructors around here to tell you exactly what happens. Yeah. The machines are laid out to give you some idea of the history of cotton. They're also laid out to give you some idea of how very dangerous this could be at times, especially with carding machines. The history is portrayed on the ground floor, from the cottage type industry we see here, through the development of the machines, and of course the history of the people who tried to destroy the mills from being created, and how this was eventually stopped. 
Further along in the hall, you get an idea of a smaller version of the machine that we'd seen upstairs. These are notably static. In this original stone building, these displays are visually impressive. Further along the road is a brick-built mill, doing exactly the same as the old stone one, but now operational by the Mosbury Fasbrick Company. This is an absolute gem for people who are interested in obtaining their own materials. And indeed, the floor is full of sheets, towels, cotton of all sorts. Well worth a visit, because I'm sure you'll find that little item that you've been looking for for the city. Head northwards to the gem in the East Lancashire Crown either by our magnificent steam engines or by our wonderfully preserved diesels. On your way northwards you will have passed the sewage works which was bombed by a Zeppelin in World War I. Come to the end of the M66 and arrived at that gem in the East Lancashire Crown, Rottenstall. Walking into Rottenstall on the Irwell Valley Way you will come across the hidden gardens of Hardman's Mill. Take some time to have a look around here and you'll find some of the mystical sculptures which remain here. Intertwined with willow weaving, you'll find some of the more sparkly sculptures within the gardens. And on exit from these mystical gardens, you'll find again the River Irwell. And on the other side, the mill buildings that have left you with somewhere to sit and have your dinner. The woodland trail here is well signposted to help you identify all the trees. Our pathway passes over the bridge of the River Irwell and winds its way underneath Hardman's Mill. What a wonderfully preserved mill this is. Complete with industrial relics and adjacent to the Cobblers Inn. Nice place for a drink or to take the children for a play. Turn around and at Rottenstall West Crossing you'll find our next sculpture. The Gateway by Chrysalis Art. This is a sculptured railway line and gate showing steam engine type wheels and I'm sure you'll agree is quite elaborate. And if you arrive by train to our characteristic Rottenstall station immediately outside are some signboards giving you direction. And of course yet another sculpture on the Irwell Way Sculpture Trail. The Buckholt tree celebrates Rossendale's award-winning links with its German twin town. And the canniest way to find it is to just look straight through our tunnel outside the station. And at the traffic lights you'll find our elaborately decorated Bockholt tree. Rottenstall, a gem in the East Lancashire Crown. On your walk around this Rossendale market town, don't forget to take a look at the myriad of architecture which has been left for us. From the busyness of the hotels to the paucity of the weavers' cottages. Take a look at the three, four or five storey buildings right next to the river. These were some of the first buildings that housed the weavers. With a wet climate, lots of flowing water and of course coal, industry was bound to boom here. And architecture came with it. There are many smaller five-storey mills. And as industry grew, we are left with a great heritage here of some of the finest mills in the country. So why not come and take a look? The centre of this industrial town overlooks the mills on its periphery and the centre still retains a lot of its Victorian character. A stroll down the main street and you find many of the little shops here, either cafeterias, clothes shops or even art shops. The introduction of tapas bars shows the influence that Rottenstall and Rossendale as a whole now has. And the coffee shops and snack bars are well worth a visit. And the superb quality of the clothes that are available in Butterworth shows the affluence of the area. To the north end of the town is Rottenstall Market, again an external vintage market, much as you can see here, and also an internal market. The indoor market here retains a lot of the character that we saw in Berry Market, but obviously it's quite a bit smaller. The stalls here of course cater for a variety of needs, from the butchers right through to the vegetable stores and knick-knack shops. And just outside the market, we get some idea once again of the affinity with Bockholt, twinned between 1952 and 2002. 
Fitzpatrick's Temperance Bar is by far one of the main attractions here in the centre of Rottenstall. Step inside to this old Victorian shop and sample the atmosphere, which has been so intimately created by its owner. Superb non-alcoholic homemade drinks are available, so pop in and sit down. And by the way, if you've got an ailment, just mention it to the owner and I'm sure he'll find something to sort you out. But just sitting down here and having a glass of sarsaparilla or dandelion and burdock, or even a refreshing bowl of soup, you'll find that a visit to Fitzpatrick's Temperance Spa and you will go home refreshed beyond belief. The routes here are well signposted, and as you walk up the road you'll see that the River Irwell bifurcates. Here as elsewhere the river has supplied power to many of the mills. With the road marking the route of the old railway line, we can see LX Mill here, which has been lovingly converted into a condominium. The large hotels here were set up for travelling salesmen, and our old religious structures mix nicely with those of the new. Walking along the road past the old vicarage, you'll pass the high chimney of Ilex Mill and come to a very well preserved weaver's cottage. This brilliantly preserved cottage gives you some idea of how this cottage industry developed onwards into one of the biggest this country's ever known. And of course, Rottenstall Cricket Club. This beautiful Wurzwick Memorial Cricket Ground is right in the centre of Rottenstall. And the cricket is good. Visiting Rottenstall and visiting Rossendale, you suddenly realise that cotton may have been big, but trickets were the slipper king. The largest manufacturer in the world, and at Lambert's Mill you can find the Footwear Museum. With a myriad of mills and canals, we take a look at the people who used to fill these mills with noise, slippers and probably some of the finest shoes that your granddad ever wore. Those faces will live on forever here in the Footwear Museum and indeed so will many of the machines that they used to operate here in the mills in Rottenstall. The maintenance of the machines themselves must have been a small industry. If you've ever wondered how a pair of shoes is made then it's worth visiting Lambert's Mill and the Footwear Museum because here you will find out. The cabinets here hold many of the tricks of the trade the lasts, the tools and indeed the leather and textiles that went in to making, in the first place, clogs. Some sturdy Edwardian shoes and of course the everlasting slippers, Trickett's the Slippers King. Some really historical Victorian shoes and up to the more modern, tracing our way through history, through the 50s, 60s and of course into the 70s. With the sizes written on them, these wooden lasts must have been the form for many a shoe through the years. Trickett's, like a lot of other mills, was a family business, and so the office itself would have been quite a family affair. The main desk that kept the accounts, and of course, a little somewhere to lie down when you got a migraine. Inside Lambert's Mill we can still offer you a brand new pair of clogs or indeed a magic pair of slippers or shoes. Trickett's old art of slipper making lives on. Meanwhile downstairs why not put your slippers on and take a look at some of the bedroom furniture, settees and cabinets that they have here in Lambert's Mill. On the stairs some of the local artists are applying their wares and to the back of the first floor you can take a look at some of the handmade cards and some of the rather superb paintings that are on display there for your front room. Lambert's also offers a wide range of decorative gemstones and geodes and browsing through the many quality products you will again find Fitzpatrick's from the Temperance Bar. Why not buy yourself a bottle? And if you want to add that special flavour to your cooking, why not take a look at Mike's homemade products. Delicious to say the least, and with Lancashire sauce. Browsing through the many products here on the first floor, in the corner you will of course find women's wear, again with that local flavour. Designs from the Northwest for sale in the Northwest. And of course a welcoming cup of coffee and a cake. Why not sit down and enjoy yourself here in Lambert's Mill? 
One of the star attractions here in Rossendale is certainly that of Whittaker Park. This vast area is worth just walking around, but visit the Rossendale Museum and take a look at life in Rottenstall and Rossendale as a whole. Why not take some time to come and see us?